about that time. So let's begin. Good morning, church. Thank you for joining us for worship. My name is Caleb Hong. It's really good to have you uh, this morning uh, on uh, Sunday, April 26th, 2020. Uh, as more and more of you are joining us, again, welcome. Thanks for uh, for being part of uh, today's online worship service. I, I was explaining uh, to folks earlier um, or before the prelude that uh, I was hoping to make this uh, worship service a little more multimedia uh, and offer different videos and things like that, but uh, that was a huge crash and burn uh, just yesterday and Friday. So um, it's going to be a little different because you'll hear the voices, at least, of Pastor Caitlin and Kim and uh, even Barry reading our scripture, but um, that's that's all we can do is offer their voices. Uh, thanks again to Frank uh, for offering prelude music. Uh, let me offer three announcements for today. Um, top three announcements. Uh, number one, virtual taste of faith. Uh, we do want to uh, let you know uh, that uh, we're creating a taste of faith uh, for folks on our um, Zoom website. So um, uh, after this service, uh, you know, if you, you'd like to connect with other people in the church, you're welcome uh, to go to our, our uh, church website. You can go to this Facebook page. We'll have a link so you can talk with each other on Zoom. That's going to be from 1015 to 11 o'clock today. Again, 1015 to 11 o'clock today, Sunday mornings, virtual Zoom, virtual taste of faith. Uh, second, homemade masks. I don't know how many of you are um, good quilters and you make masks like this. Uh, more and more, we're going to be needing these masks. So uh, if you are able to make these masks, uh, we have some folks already making them, but if you'd like to join them in making these masks um, for folks within our congregation when we return, we want to um, be able to offer masks. So um, if you would be able to make five, 10, some of you will, will make 30, uh, we encourage you, please uh, do so and uh, ship them to the church and we'll uh, distribute them once we are able to reopen. Third announcement, it is Techie Team. We want to, uh, as long as we're uh, forced to, to worship online, we want to make sure that everyone can get connected to our worship services. So if you have a computer and you're just having trouble with uh, getting on Facebook or our church website. Uh, if you uh, don't want to get a Facebook account, uh, but, but want to be able to uh, worship with us, again, that's possible. Uh, if you're having trouble and you don't have a tech person at home, we are forming a techie team. Um, so uh, please do contact the church. Let us help you, connect you with somebody who can help you get connected to Facebook. Now, they can't fix all of your computer problems. Please don't ask them to do all that, but they can help you get connected with the basics of Facebook and uh, just kind of navigating our church website. So hopefully um, you can take advantage of that. If you're able to help you have basic skills, uh, computer skills and patience, uh, we'd love to have you join the techie team. Uh, contact Linda Bitzer in our church office for that. All right, we're going to move to our opening hymn. It's going to be Crown Him with Many Crowns. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see uh, the words on the side of the screen. And today we're going to have accompaniment. Here we go. Behold his hands and side, 
Those wounds yet visible above in beauty glorified. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. My praise and glory shall fill throughout eternity. I'm sorry for throwing some of you off um, with singing the wrong verse. Uh, I guess that happens sometimes. All right, uh, let's go to um, Faith Kids. We can encourage any kids, if you have any um, uh, kids that are awake and watching the service, please join us uh, for the service. Uh, you can uh, come closer to um, the, the TV screen or computer, computer monitor, and we have a special word for you from Miss Kim. Now, you're gonna hear a little uh, sound in the background. She had this video that she made, and uh, uh, the sound in the background is rain. She actually videotaped this in the rain. Uh, but here's Miss Kim. Good morning, boys and girls. Just a few days ago, we celebrated Earth Day, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. As you can tell, I'm outside and it's actually raining today. And I wanted to celebrate all of God's great creation. God created everything in nature, the birds, the fish, the sun, the earth, and us. And we have this great opportunity to celebrate creation even now when we're stuck at home. The best thing about this stay at home order is we can still go outside and we can go for walks and bike rides. And I thought, wouldn't it be neat if I gave you all a challenge this week? If when you're outside for your walk, you find one thing from every color of the rainbow that God has created. So for red, maybe you will find a red rock. For green, you could use leaves or grass. For yellow, I just saw some blooming daffodils at my neighbor's before I left for my walk today. So this week, while you're home, while you're out for your walks and your bike ride, I encourage you to find something from nature, each color of the rainbow. Find something red, orange, yellow, blue, green, and purple. Have a wonderful week, boys and girls. And don't forget that God has given us this beautiful creation and we should celebrate it and take good care of it each and every day. Have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. Bye-bye, boys and girls. Okay. Again, uh, I'm sorry that I could watch that video. And you had to watch me wearing a silly hat. But that was Miss Kim. And uh, outside... Uh, videotaping herself and offering faith kids. Um, one other thing that I would add um, regarding faith kids. Um, if you look on the faith kids um, Facebook page, uh, they have a, a project, uh, a new project asking everyone to do. It's to uh, draw and color a rainbow, make them bright and beautiful. When we come back together, we'll decorate the church with these rainbows. Um, because uh, rainbows are reminders of God's love. So um, if you want, please uh, uh, download the picture or just uh, make your own rainbow and, um, and decorate them, okay? And second, if you really want to stump your parents, ask how rainbows are made. <laughs> Let's uh, move to uh, prayers of the people. And what we'll do is I'm going to share prayers uh, that I see on the on the, on the ch chat page, also some prayers that have been submitted um, over the last few days, and uh, and then we'll have Pastor Caitlin lead us in prayer. So prayers, of course, for our first responders and doctors, nurses, police officers, firefighters, paramedics, essential workers, and all who are caring for us. So let's uh, continue to pray for their health, and also for the health of their families. Uh, prayers for construction workers. Uh, Workers at nursing homes and rehabilitation centers in particular uh, are uh, being requested um, by one of our church members as they struggle with the growing spread of COVID-19 in um, these areas. Prayers for teachers and school administrators and aides as they adjust to e-learning for the rest of the school year. 
Prayers for students who are missing school, sports, dances, graduations. And then uh, prayers for those in our church family who have been hospitalized and recovering from illnesses, Rich Carriel, Linda Wright, Bill Zeitz. And then ongoing prayers um, that have come in. Uh, prayer, uh, prayer for Kelly Palmer and babies, uh, for health and strength of mom and babies. Uh, Beth Kaczynski asks prayers for Connor and all the staff at Hinsdale Hospital who are caring for the COVID-19. Beth also asks prayers for Kyle uh, and all the workers at Costco in Orland Park as they keep things safe for our shoppers. And then Jeannie Lang yesterday uh, asked, uh, she looked for praise for the micro food pantry uh, at our church, which is definitely being utilized uh, more and more. And then she requested um, help uh, to refill it because it is emptying out. So if uh, you are able, please uh, drop a lot of non-perishable goods to the church, to the micro tree. Okay. Uh, other um, prayer requests. I don't see any others that I haven't read. So I'm going to go to um, the uh, prayer that Pastor Caitlin offered us, if I can find it. Here we go. A note as we enter into this time of prayer. Prayers of people as they call in response. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you are invited to respond to hear our prayer. Let us pray. In a world that is full of obstacles that we do not know how to conquer, we turn to you, Lord. We confess that often we believe we can overcome all things we face on our own. But soon we realize that it is only through you that we can do all things. Turn us again to you. Remind us of the hope that we find in you who conquers all things, even death itself. Lord, we pray for the world, the world that is reeling as we try to make sense of how to live during this pandemic. We pray for our nation's leaders, the leaders of Illinois, the leaders of our local communities. Grant them your wisdom as they make decisions for our health. We give you thanks for your medical personnel, the paramedics, first responders, the grocery store workers, and all those who continue to work and serve your people. Guide and protect them in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our okay. prayer. We lift up to you, your church. Right now it feels very different to be your hands and feet. While worship services are inaccessible for them and gatherings as your community have been changed for us all, remind us of our limitless presence. Let us hear again your call to be those who share the hope that you offer by overcoming all we face in life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This past week, we are reminded of this beautiful world that you create as we celebrate Earth Day. In the midst of a health pandemic, we are reminded of the beauty you continue to bring into our lives as new life blooming in spring. As stewards of all you create, stir in us a passion for your creation. Guide us to share our love for you with all of the world around us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, there are so many whose health we lift up to you. We lift up to you those around the world who are fighting COVID-19. We lift up to you those who are facing other illnesses in hospitals, rehabilitation centers, and now. You are our great healer, our great comforter. Strengthen those who are ill and the many who are caring for them. Lord, we lift up to you those whose names we have read out loud this morning and those who we now lift up during a moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now let us pray together the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, thank you, Pastor Caitlin. All right, we have a, a song next. And uh, it's Breathe On Me, Breath of God. Let's sing together. <clears throat> Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love, 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 this love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until Until with thee I will and will to do and to Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am holy thine, till all this earthly Okay, we're going to go um, into our scripture reading, and our scripture reading uh, for today uh, is offered by um, Barry Barnett, uh, whose voice you'll hear in a sec, and um, because he knows our uh, AV uh, gurus, uh, particularly Diane, he gets music under his reading. Here's uh, Barry reading from 1 Peter chapter 5. Good morning, Faith. Today's scripture comes from 1 Peter chapter 12, verses 6 to 11. Humble yourselves, therefore, the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves to work. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace has called you to his eternal glory and Christ will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Right. Thank you, Barry. All right, so uh, good morning again. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us for worship today. Um, we start uh, this morning a new sermon series called Overcomers. And uh, it's fitting that we start this kind of series uh, as we enter into the sixth week of our stay-at-home uh, quarantine. 
Uh, schools have closed uh, for the rest of the academic year. Much of the economy has been shut down. Uh, just a few years ago, we know Governor Pritzker announced a month-long extension of his stay-at-home order. If I asked you who among you has encountered obstacles recently, I expect all of you to raise your hands. The truth is, we've all faced obstacles in the past and we'll all face obstacles in the future. But the question is this, will the obstacles overwhelm us or will we overcome them? Will these obstacles bring out the worst in us or somehow bring out the best in us? And what does the Bible have to say about facing big, scary, hairy obstacles? Where did they come from? Who's the source? What's the cause? Why do they impact all people? Shouldn't some people, the good people, be exempt? How is it possible for God to use obstacles to grow and mature us in ways that could not otherwise grow and mature? These are just some of the questions we'll try to answer in the course of this series. And all this is to say, I'm really glad that you joined us for this uh, uh, message and worship service today. If you or a friend or a family member need to hear this kind of message, I would encourage you to share it with them because all of us need hope and encouragement these days. Let's pray and we'll begin. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word for the gift of your scriptures that speak to us. So would you open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, would you soften our hearts to receive the movements, the blessings, the gifts of your Holy Spirit again this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So to be an overcomer of obstacles, it's helpful to understand them. Uh, where they're from, what's their source? Who's behind it all? So uh, this morning, we're going to focus on this question. Who or what is the source of life's obstacles? Who or what is the source of life's obstacles? And I'm going to offer three uh, responses to this question. The first response is this, people. Let me use my really high tech. People. Do you know uh, anyone who's ever used their authority or power to you or people that you love? Have you ever had people put obstacles in your path intentionally or unintentionally? Perhaps it was a boss or co-worker. Perhaps it was a teacher or professor. Perhaps it was a best friend or a sibling or a spouse. The sad truth is human beings are the source of much of our own suffering. Think about civil wars, world wars, gun violence, human trafficking. Think of all the ways we pollute our planet, the sky, the rivers, the rain, the seas. Think of all the things that we eat and drink and smoke, the poisons that we put into our brains and our lungs and our bodies. The lies we say, the rumors we spread, the promises we break, the trust we betray. It's kind of like the old Pogo cartoon uh, that you may have seen, and it says, we have met the enemy, and the enemy is us. We put obstacles in each other. Today. We are oftentimes the source of others' suffering. Consider the life of Jesus. Yes, Jesus is is the Son of God. He's almighty, all-powerful, part of the Holy Trinity. There is nothing, no one, greater in all of creation than Jesus. But from the moment of his conception as a human being, even Jesus faced obstacles in life. His mother was unwed. His father was unwed. The census of a Roman emperor forced them to travel to Bethlehem late in Mary's third trimester. The jealousy of a lunatic king forced Jesus and his family to live as refugees in Egypt. Even Jesus knew all too well the suffering people cause one another. We have met the enemy, and the enemy is us. We put obstacles in others' way. We are the source of much suffering in the world, 
are also the source of much suffering for the world. This past Wednesday, it marked the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. This year's Earth Day, it was noticeable because, it, uh, one, because there was no outdoor rallies. It was really different. Two, because Earth was much cleaner and healthier than it had been in a long, long time. You've been watching the news this past week, scientists and reporters alike, they've been sharing how the Earth has actually benefited from global sheltering in place. Residents of big cities all around the world, including Los Angeles, now they can see blue skies instead of a smoggy haze. The canals in Venice and rivers all around the world, they are visibly cleaner and clearer and healthier. There's hope that the Earth can recover if people do more to care for our planet and less to destroy it. Let's make this more personal. My family, uh, like yours, uh, has been in quarantine for six weeks, and life has not been easy. With two teenage girls at home, we're all lucky to be alive, frankly. Our home has been filled with drama-rama. No fingers, but I will. Our younger daughter, especially, she loves loves needling her older sister. She loves messing with the rest of us. And now that we're home 24 seven, there is no escape. Needless to say, our household has been filled with arguments and fights, tears and apologies. Why? Because the first source of our suffering is people. We have met the enemy and the enemy is us. We put obstacles in each other's way. A second response to the source of suffering is evil, or the devil, or Satan, the incarnation of evil. Now, some of you may have squirmed just a little bit when you heard our morning scripture from 1 Peter. And in case you missed it, let me read it again. I'm going to start from verse 6, and I'm even going to hold up the scripture so you can read it yourself too, okay? I hope the picture is right here. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Why? Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand fast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. In the Old Testament, the, world that's, uh, the word that's translated devil is hasatan. Um, so you hear Satan in there. Literally translated, hasatan means the adversary, has the, right? The adversary, or the prosecutor in Job, or the opponent. The devil is a personification of evil. It's the opposition to God's good. It does everything to undermine God's will and God's way. Now, uh, this is helpful to uh, understand. There is no description in the Bible of the devil as a red-horned demon carrying around a pitchfork. Passages like First Peter, they do refer to the devil, a roaring lion, a hungry beast who prowls around looking for people to devour and destroy. If you go to the beginning of the Bible in the creation story, we know the devil shows up as a serpent who convinces Adam and Eve that God cannot be trusted, that God's will is not good. Disobey God. Live apart from God. Do your own thing. Be your own boss. You know, I imagine the devil kind of like a cheering section for the opposing team, taunting us from the sidelines saying, eat that fruit, eat that fruit, eat that fruit. In the New Testament, the devil appears at the start of Jesus' ministry right after his baptism. We know that while Jesus is praying and fasting for 40 days in the wilderness, the devil shows up and tries his best to persuade Jesus to disobey God. Live apart from God. Take the easy road. Avoid the cross. Again, be your own boss. 
Set your own rules. You're so much smarter than God. Your plans are so much greater and better than God's plans. After Jesus resists all of these temptations in the wilderness, the devil goes away. But later, at another moment of vulnerability, when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, it's Monday, Thursday, the night before his death. Jesus is praying in the garden. He's asked his disciples to pray with him, but they all fell asleep. Remember that? And again, this is the moment that the devil appears, tempting Jesus, disobey God, live apart from God, take the easy road, avoid the cross, say no to God. Jesus struggles so much on this night that he sweats drops of blood before he finally prays to the Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Here's my point. If the devil, this adversary, prosecutor, opponent, can go after Jesus, son of God, the devil can and most certainly will come after you and after me. Now, I'm not encouraging you or suggesting that you should be afraid of a red-horned demon carrying around a pitchfork, but I am suggesting that evil exists. Evil exists. It's a reality. It's all around us. And unless we are diligent and awake and alert, we're going to hear the same temptation. We're going to hear the same siren call from the sidelines calling us to disobey God, live apart from God. We'll hear the same cheering uh, section telling us to take the easy road. Avoid the cross. Say no to God day after day. Say no to love hour after hour. Say no to life minute after minute. And we see examples of people giving in to this temptation every day. We see good people who do unspeakably bad things. We see it in everyday people ignoring the and the pain of neighbors in need. We see it in ourselves when we do the things that we know we should not do. When we curse others, accuse others, blame others, belittle others, just because we can. So let's go back to the original question. Who or what is the source of life's obstacles? The first response, evil. That's humanity, you and me. Second response, I'm sorry. First response is people, humanity, you and me. Second response is evil. Okay, that's the devil or Satan, whatever you call it, uh, the incarnation of evil. Okay. The third response uh, may surprise you because uh, it's God. There are times when God is the source of life's obstacles. Sometimes uh, it comes as a consequence uh, of our sin. For example, uh, the eviction of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, the great blood, wandering in the deserts for 40 years before being allowed to enter the Promised Land, the great destruction of Jerusalem and the First Temple. All of these events are understood as God's judgment. It's coming from God in response to our sin. But the Bible is also clear, God causes suffering not only as punishment, but also for the sake of growth and development. It's kind of like a personal trainer or a physical therapist or a soccer coach. Anyone ever been to an easy physical therapy session or a painless preseason workout? Me neither. Good personal trainers, I think they all follow the manga, no pain, no gain. In high school, preseason workouts, they were referred to as puke season workouts because coaches, they all had to push us, you know, in a tape. Listen to what the Bible says. This is uh, in the book of Hebrews. And it says, they, and this is referring to parents, discipline us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a heart of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. 
Now, this is the same kind of argument that uh, Peter writes in his letter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. And um, Peter writes this, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, while you have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials, these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and when Jesus Christ is revealed. So like a good trainer, therapist, a loving parent, or a coach, there are times when God places obstacles in our path for our benefit, for a greater good. And then there are those real head scratchers, like in the case of the Apostle Paul. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul writes uh, that he suffered from some kind of ailment, an illness, a, a thorn in the stuff that was so painful, so difficult, that, that it hindered him in his life, his work, his ministry. So Paul cries out for God to heal him, give him relief, take away this thorn. And God answers, no. God's response is, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. In other words, it's through the enduring of this pain that you're going to grow in faith. It's through persevering through this suffering that you'll be able to carry on my mission. Now, before we object, too loudly to God's response. But remember that this was also God's response to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus pleaded for another way, when he begged for a path that would not include the cross, God said, no. Well, let's be clear. This is the exception, not the rule. Okay, God is not the source of our cancer, our addictions, our wars. God certainly not the author of worldwide pandemics like coronavirus. God is in the business of giving life, not stealing it. God does the work of restoration, not destruction. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says he came so that we might have life and have it abundantly. So please don't take this third source and put it into really bad theology, which I hear are all over. Even as you try to wrap your head around of God as the source of obstacles. Remember that God is first and foremost love, and God loves you and I more than we'll ever know. So let's review. Um, yeah, let's review. Uh, all of us will face obstacles in life. Sometimes they'll come from people. Sometimes they'll come from evil. Sometimes they'll come from God, and if I could add a, a fourth source, it would be the IDKGAYM category, which means, I don't know, go ask your mother. And that's something I learned in seminary, one of the few things I actually remember. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, the truth is, uh, my brain is too small to comprehend all the mysteries of the universe, and there's certainly a lot that can fall into this fourth category. I'll close with the story of an athlete. Her name is Wilma Ru Rudolph. Uh, perhaps you've heard of her. Wilma Rudolph, she was the 20th of 22 children in her family. She was born prematurely, and doctors did not expect Wilma to live. But she lived. Unfortunately, at the age of four, she contracted double pneumonia and fever, which left her um, leg paralyzed. Uh, Wilma learned to walk only with the aid of a metal brace on her leg. When Wilma was nine years old, she removed that leg brace and she began walking without it. By the age of 13, Wilma had developed you know, a, a steady, rhythmic walk. And it's in that year she decided to start. Wilma entered her first race. She was so excited, but she came in dead last. In fact, for the next three years, Wilma finished last in every race that she entered. But Wilma didn't give up. She kept running because running brought her joy. Remember, she couldn't walk before. 
She kept running because she held on to this hope that she would grow healthier and stronger and better. And then one day it happened. Wilma Rudolph, she won a race. And this little girl who wasn't supposed to live, who wasn't supposed to walk, who never won a race in her first three years of competitive racing, she went on to win three gold medals in the 1960 Olympic Games in Rome. When asked how she persevered in the face of life's obstacles, Wilma responded, the doctors told me I would never walk again. My mother told me that I would. I chose to believe my mother. Friends, let me ask you, who will you choose to believe? Whose word will you trust? While our lives may not be as dramatic as Wilma Rudolph's, all of us face obstacles in life. All of us experience troubles that demand faith and perseverance. And if you agree with me, just say amen. It may be financial or work-related, it may be marital stress or separation or divorce. It may be health concerns for yourself or those you love. It may be struggles with grief or depression or addiction. Regardless of the obstacles, here's the key. Yes, it's important that we wrestle with the question of why, but you got to move on to the question of so what. Yes, it's important to understand the possible sources of our troubles. Yes, that's important. But it's actually more important to consider next steps. So don't be overwhelmed by obstacles. Let's be overcomers of them. Let's be women and men who choose to believe, who put our trust in the word of Jesus Christ. Don't give up. Hang in there. Join us next week as we consider the blessings of weakness. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of your word, for your spirit that meets us right where we are, for your spirit that encourages us never to give up, never to give in, that reminds us that you give us this a spirit not of timidity, but of power and of strength. So, Lord, regardless of where we are, whether we're alone and we're struggling with isolation, or we're together with family members and they're driving us crazy, <laughs> Regardless of what's happening in our lives, with health, with finances, everything else, help us to put our hope and our trust in you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for being the source of our strength. Hear our prayers again this day. Give us your strength, your vision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, let's move to our uh, invitation to offering. And that is going to come from Pat Caitlin. As we continue our service, we do so with the receiving of our gifts and our time. You can give by visiting the website that is below. Um, uh, giving has looked a little bit differently since we are having our stay at home orders. We invite you to give online, so through the website, or to mail in checks or prepared gifts you have, or you can bring them when we do return back to church. Let us say a prayer over our offering and all that we give. Let us pray. Lord, we know that all that we have, it is a gift from you, as you are the source of everything. And so we give back to you just a portion of what you have given to us. We ask that you bless these gifts, that you bless us to go out into the world as a sign of all that you are able to overcome that we go out as a sign of light in the midst of darkness. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to go to our closing hymn, which is hymn number um, 419. I am thine, O Lord, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Of faith and be closer drawn to 
If you would join me as I close this out with a word of prayer. Lord, you are so gracious, so thank you for the gift of life, of peace, of hope. Thank you for who you are, and you remind us that no matter what obstacle we face, we're never alone in the midst of it, and that no matter what obstacles we face, you can bring good from even the worst times. So continue, Lord, to shape us and mold us and strengthen us and use us um, to bless others around our family and friends and strangers, all for your glory this day and all else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's good to see you. Again, uh, devotions, uh, midday devotions, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays at 2. Hope you have a wonderful week. God bless you. Uh, virtual Taste of Faith. Uh, we'll start at ten fifteen. Ready, big people, always sit to know when you're feeling blue. I step in strutters and let.